Well, good evening and welcome to Bronco Nation Live on this fine Wednesday here in March. I'm your host, Jordan Parker, joined by two of my favorite colleagues, Laura Zielinski and Matt Russell. And we have an action-packed, very fun show for you guys tonight. Lots to talk about. Uh, we are going to talk about industry news. We're going to talk about how you can win a Bronco Raptor. we got a lot of events coming up. Supercell East in Townsend, Tennessee. Next month in April, we got Moab Bronco Safari and some news to make there in May, as well as a few more events throughout the year. Bronco Nation Takeover Day is at Off Rodeo. We got some merchandise updates. We got a recap of King of Hammers and a ton of stuff. It has been a busy year already, and we got a lot more planned from you. And tonight we have a very special guest. We are joined by Ford's North American Product Communications Director, Mike Levine, who you all, are, I'm sure, are very familiar with from Twitter and the Bronco world, as well as the Ford world in general. He is here to take your questions live and in person. We're going to put him on the hot seat, see what you guys have to ask him, uh, and allow you to get to know Mike a little bit better, get a behind-the-scenes look as to what his job is and what role he plays at Ford. So without further ado, we are going to jump right into it and welcome North American Product Communications Director, Mike Levine. Hey, all. Nice to hey, see Mike. You. How's it going? Thanks for yeah, joining Jordan, us. Really good to see you. Glad you recovered from your uh, Bronco DR. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Not recovered yet. I didn't get enough. I think I need a little bit more time in the seat, but we can have that <laughs> discussion another day. Mike, thank you so much for taking the time out of your very busy schedule uh, to join us. We really appreciate it, and we know Bronco Nation appreciates it as well. For those of you who want to ask questions, we already have dozens of questions that have been submitted online in the forums and on social media over the past couple of days, but we are going to take questions live as well. So if you are in the Super Chat watching and want to ask Mike a question, you can click the Q&A box in the Super Chat on the right-hand side of your screen. Submit your question there, and we will be picking a few at the end. But we're going to jump right into it. I'm going to turn it over to Laura. Uh, Laura, why don't you ask Mike a little bit about what he does and how we got involved in the world of Ford? Of course. So, Mike, tell us how you first got started in the auto industry completely. Oh, um, geez. Uh, probably not the shortest question, but I'll try to make it pretty quick. Um, I grew up in a household. Uh, I actually grew up in a GM household. Uh, my dad was uh, big into GM products and uh, he uh, used to restore Corvettes and kind of caught the bug from uh, from my dad and used to remember I grew up I grew up in uh, Arizona and my only exposure to the auto industry besides what he was doing was uh, he had a subscription to Automotive News and I used to wait for Automotive News to come every uh, Monday because it was like oh like a really uh, pure look at the auto industry more than just looking at the buff books and stuff like that. It was like, here was the business of what was happening. And I kind of caught the fever from there and um, like, didn't have any connections to Detroit. Um, but um, uh, I guess the long story short is my dad wouldn't let me drive the Corvettes. <laughs> like, don't go near the Corvettes. Uh, but I did have a truck and I started getting uh, uh, really uh, involved with uh, having the truck. And by the time I got to college, um, I was like, oh, trucks are cool. And like, without dating myself too much, that was when the internet was like really new and uh, uh, said, well, I'm gonna create a website about trucks because I can't find any information about trucks. Like I can find information about sports cars and I can find information about all these other things, but you know, there was no resource for trucks. And so um, I started a website uh, in college uh, literally, I had to go to dealers around Tucson, Arizona to find brochures, like paper brochures. And I had to go to a computer lab to find a scanner to scan the brochures in because scanners were like $2,000 way back then. And uh, created a website about trucks simply by <laughs> cutting and pasting uh, brochures about trucks. And uh, it's really funny because it all of a sudden found a following online that others were looking for that same information. And so eventually that website uh, became something called uh, pickuptrucks.com and uh, had to bootstrap that uh, from a day job. Like I, uh, when I got out of college, my first job was with um, IBM, IBM Consulting. Uh, and then I worked for Ernst & Young. And uh, during my during the day, I would uh, talk to clients and see clients. But then on the weekends, I was like saving up money, and I actually I bought a scanner, <laughs> which, which was like, what do you do with one of your first paychecks uh, back then? And I went and bought a scanner, and I'm like, oh, I can afford this now. Don't have to go to a computer lab. And uh, so um, took all my skills from that, and and really stepped it up another level, and had the following, and eventually got to the point where. Um, 
was able to raise like uh, friends and family to get in and do a like a round of funding and hired in employees and had freelancers and bootstrapped it and um, it was eventually it was called pickup it started out as pickuptruck.com and we eventually bought the other URL which was pickuptrucks.com. <laughs> Uh, I got more than one in the industry um, and uh, I, I became a journalist, essentially quit my job uh, in the other area and went full time doing this. And we were raising advertising funds and doing journalism and all this stuff, all learning on the fly. And uh, in 2008, it was uh, acquired by Cars.com. And so PickupTrucks.com is now part of Cars.com and uh, had to stay with them for three years under contract. And then in 2011, Ford approached and said, um, hey, um, how would you like to get involved in the uh, launch of the all new then aluminum F-150? So this was 2011. That wasn't gonna be until like 2014, 2015. I'm like, oh boy, this is like, this is like when Apple, Apple calls you up and says, hey, we need you to help launch an iPhone or you know, do something, something like that. that. So uh, since then I've, been doing uh, product communications for Ford Motor Company. So sorry, that was probably longer than you wanted, but that's the uh, the whole origin story. No, that's awesome. And we agree, trucks are cool. Um, do you consider the Bronco a truck or a SUV? I know some people call it a truck and that's always been a, a debate, but is it a truck or is it a, is a SUV in your it's opinion? It's a Bronco, come on, it's a Bronco. It's a <laughs> I agree. It's, 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 yep. Yep. It's, it's, it's It can only be described as a Bronco because that's what people understand it to be. Yeah. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about what you do do in your job at Ford right now? Yeah, sure. So um, so product communications director, uh, primarily around uh, Ford Blue products, so anything that's internal combustion or hybrid. Um, and so I have the privilege of working with the most amazing teams around Ford Motor Company uh, to find and tell stories. Um, about um, our latest and greatest uh, uh, vehicles. So uh, it includes uh, Ford F-Series, uh, anything internal combustion with the hybrids, so the power of hybrids. Uh, it includes our enthusiast vehicles, which of course has to include Bronco and also includes uh, Mustang. And then also our family vehicles. So vehicles, SUVs like uh, Edge, Escape, um, Explorer, Expedition. Um, so really it's around working with, um, the most amazingly smart and much more gifted people than me, uh, to find and tell stories about all of these great products and make sure that, uh, media and others, um, you know, hear it straight from Ford. Thanks, Mike. What is your favorite aspect of this job? It seems like you do get to do a lot of travel. Um, you get to go to a lot of places. Like you just said, you meet amazing people and work with amazing people. What aspect do you enjoy one of the most parts of it? Yeah, I mean, the first part is definitely the people like I can't I mean, I've, I've I, I just like, you know, it, having access within Ford to um, crazy smart engineers um, and uh, um, the most like accomplished and, and uh, um, you know, people who do marketing and have done marketing their entire careers around trucks and know the customer, like live the customer life and know who the customer is. And 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 the team that I have working with me, um, they're they're um, they're amazing. So I, I love the people first. Uh, and then um, I love the, the fact that we've got such great vehicles. Like I can't, in the, in the 11 years that I've been with Ford, um, I can't remember a time that we've had a better portfolio of vehicles to, to talk about. Like Maverick is just total game changer, like just completely caught people by surprise. And it's just such a, such a cool, affordable, compact pickup truck, um, you know, F-150, where you get like uh, pro power on board. And, uh, you know, I'm watching, I'm just, just a couple minutes ago, someone on Twitter, you know, uh, we were going back and forth, like they lost power at their home. Uh, they have a lightning, but I mean, they both have pro power on board and lightning's case, it has, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, home power backup. Um, it's just like what, what other vehicle lets you, you know, power, uh, power either your home or power appliances in your home when you, when you lose power and then, um, you know, super duty. Anyway, I could go on way too long about the vehicles, but the vehicles are just um, iconic and awesome. They are. I've seen a lot of stories about how they save weddings and all sorts of things like that when the power goes out. So that is very cool. What is your favorite vehicle in the lineup right now? Oh, hard. To you have don't have favorite. to say Bronco, by the way. Just yeah, hard, to, hard to have. <laughs> For impartial. Um, Hard, hard to have a favorite per se. I mean, I love, 
Um, I love Bronco Raptor. I think it's completely and utterly bonkers. I think that <laughs> true um, that the capability that the team has put into that, the thought, the engineering, the performance, there is literally, there's no other vehicle like that. Certainly not. I mean, uh, just, just nothing that comes close to what Bronco Raptor does at the price that it does it at. And um, it's just like that, that is, um, <laughs> I just, I just have to laugh. Every time I get in that thing, I just have to laugh because it's such an amazing vehicle. We uh, followed you around in the desert while you were driving one of the Raptors, and it did look like you were having a great time driving that one and <laughs> we, keeping we up, with quite keep up with the VR. Uh, yeah, if you, Mike was if trying you, to keep up with me. If if, uh, <laughs> if, if, um, if you don't have a smile on your face and and don't feel like a superhero getting out of a Raptor, then um, we have some we have some uh, uh, coaching that we're going to have to do off off to the <laughs> off to the sideline here. True. Yeah, it hits you pretty quick. Uh, what about in the past? What was the favorite vehicle you owned before? Was it a truck? Uh, well, I would tell you what I I I, I probably well I, I I post about it probably every day, but it's my Ford Ranger. And um, out of all the vehicles I've owned that are Fords, and I've had three Mustangs, I've had three Rangers, I've had. Um, uh, my son has a Bronco. Um, uh, my daughter has a Maverick. Um, my wife has a Lincoln Aviator. Out of all these vehicles, um, my favorite right now, and I just told my wife it the other day, I'm like, I love my Ranger. I just, I just absolutely, it's the best, best truck I've ever owned, hands down. I've got 30,000 miles on it. It just like, I take it everywhere. Uh, it just does everything that I needed to do. It's just, um, I just love that truck. That's, that thing is, is awesome. You have some pretty epic pictures with that on Instagram. Is there a favorite public lands that you've been to with it? Um, I would tell you, like um, camping on the edge of the Grand Canyon is is is. I, I just um, there's a there's a super secret spot that we've got that we go to, and I like to go with friends. And uh, it's it's amazing that you can haul all your gear, take your family, take take all your stuff, and and uh, um, you know. People on the south rim of the Grand Canyon would be paying like, you know, a thousand dollars a night for some crazy hotel room or, you know, something like that and fighting with, you know, a million tourists. And I can take my ranger and go with a couple of buddies and we can light a campfire and we can wake up literally on the edge of the Grand Canyon and st and start the day. I, that's, it's like it's hard to describe until you do it like and have and and have access to that as like public lands where you can just go to it. I mean, people out west of the Mississippi don't understand. Uh, I mean, if you, you know, it, it's like we're, we're gifted in the U.S. to be able to have all this land um, that we're able to go to go and explore. And uh, so that that's Grand Canyon is def definitely tops. Uh, Utah is epic. Northern California, Death Valley. Death Valley is another uh, another spot to just go off and, and explore. Yeah, and between Bronco and then all the other vehicles in the Ford lineup that let you get out there, that's um, that's what we love doing. We love going out on the do the base camps and do the, the trips with you guys. And um, that's it seems like there's a lot of territory that we still have to cover with Bronco and the sport and get out there and have some more fun. So I have one more question for you. I see it a lot on Instagram and Twitter. What is your coffee order? I see a lot of blue bottle over there, but we run on coffee in Bronco Nation. Um, this is this is crucial information for us right here. Hashtag Bronco and coffee. Yes. yes. Um, I mean that's just my that's my I, uh, uh, that's my Saturday Sunday. Uh, as long as I'm not as long as I'm not camping somewhere out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, if I'm home. Uh, my favorite spot is is definitely Blue Bottle. I post way too many pictures of it, but um, you got a I brand just, deal you know, with them I, coming up or something. What's that? You got a brand deal with Blue oh, Bottle they, coming up? They pay you to post. Uh, that. No, but I've gotten to be <laughs> such good friends that they send me Christmas cards and stuff like that with the uh, baristas. <laughs> it's pretty funny, but in any case, um, it's just cappuccino. I, I just yeah. uh, you know just give me a cappuccino and and get me rolling in the morning and good to go. Jordan has way too many shots of espresso in his, yeah, but it works for I'm him. On, but I'm on eight today so far. Okay. Uh, espresso <laughs> is good. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. I appreciate those good tips. I'm going to hand it over to Jordan, and you can go through some of the ones that we've gathered from the people online. Cool. Yes. Yeah, thank you. So we're going to shift over to audience questions now. That we're going to start with questions that we have oh, compiled. Oh, this is a bad connection. I think I got a... I saw you guys. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> There's the mic we know from Twitter. Um, no, we're going to move over to audience questions uh, that we compiled from the forums and social. Again, if you guys have any questions live in the Super Chat, make sure you click the Q&A box on the right-hand side of your screen and submit questions there. There, That is what we are going to be pulling from. Okay, first question, Mike. Uh, this comes from Bronco Fred in the forums. Do you think the industry will move more towards the Lucid and Tesla model of distribution and away from the current model uh, that Ford uses? Mm -hmm. And all their OEMs for that matter. Yeah, so I can... Um... I, I know that we have talked about um, on the EV side what uh, Jim Farley sees as the um, what we're going to do with our dealers. So um, I won't go beyond that. But um, you know, I I find that um, you know never know what the future holds. But mm. um, you know, I've I've bought most of my vehicles, and you know, I foresee still buying vehicles in the future. And um, you know, I just um, stay tuned. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Another question from Bronco Fred. Do you think Ford will resurrect any more of the iconic brands of the past like they did with Maverick, Bronco, and Lightning? Well, that's a great one because um, that is really what we said we were going to do like years ago was we were mm -hmm. going to bring back some of our most iconic nameplates and electrify our most name, uh, iconic nameplates. So when you look at like Mustang, you don't just see a Mustang sports coupe anymore, right? But you see beyond that, you see Mustang Mach-E. Um, and with Bronco, we have, you know, Bronco Sport. So, um, you know, not going to speculate or comment on speculation about future products. Um, but uh, as you can imagine, um, I, I think we've got some pretty fantastic brand families today um, around Mustang, around F-Series, um, uh, around Bronco. And uh, I think that gives everyone a really great base to think about where we go next. But uh, no, no other news to, to make tonight. But um, I, like I said, I've never seen the lineup so strong uh, as what we have here. And I think it really, really does play because we, we know what each of those brands stands mm -hmm. for. Um, and um, I think that's what we've, uh, I think that's what we've been bringing to life. So uh, hopefully that's what we continue to do. Yeah, it's been really cool to see the brands like Maverick, especially Maverick's been a hit as you commented earlier, seeing a ton of those on the road. Lightning is in, in increasing numbers on the road and Bronco as well. So I guess yeah. you guys at home will just have to I, wait and see. Well, I think that I think the cool part you mentioned Maverick, and I think the coolest part about Maverick was Maverick was always an affordable vehicle in the Ford lineup. When it was mm -hmm. a car, it was like a very affordable car, and the fact that we brought it back, but now it's an affordable compact pickup truck. I mean, it just kind of shows you um, that it still stays true to that promise of what a Maverick has been, but totally twists the plot into now it's a truck, and oh by the way, that truck, you know cost less than a Honda Civic, which is also another affordable entry level vehicle mm -hmm. and it gets better fuel economy. So um, it gives you an idea of, of you know, the potential of uh, what some of the uh, iconic nameplates there are. Yeah, I got some time behind the Maverick um, in Vegas last year and the, I guess, two years ago now. Um, but it was super impressive. Great vehicle. The hybrid engine model specifically is really nice. Great gas mileage. So super excellent product. And I know a lot of people are trying to get one and uh, you guys can't build enough of them, which is a good problem to have. Um, the demand for Maverick is, is super high. Uh, next question, another future product question. Uh, do you think there will be any special edition Broncos in the future? Not asking you to give away the farm, but perhaps a teaser on the next exciting edition. And that comes from Irish Door on the forums. Well, let's see. Hmm. We have a Bronco Everglades. Uh, we have a Bronco Raptor. Um, you know, I, I would tell you that I think um, I think if you look at um, uh, what we do with our vehicles, that we always kind of figure out a way to um, bring out new um, new attributes in the vehicles. Um, not going to comment about speculation on future products, uh, but um, you know, just uh, I think we all know the value of um, what special editions can do um, uh, when they're done the right way. Fair enough. There you go. Uh, next question. Any updates on the Ford Pass Performance app with off-road trail mapping? I know you're out on the trails a lot, so. I love the trails. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I know there's lots of questions about the uh, performance app, but um, no news today around the performance app. Um, but definitely know the value of having a great trail app to, uh, to take with you um, when you're out in the uh, public lands that are out there. Stay tuned. Uh, next question from Ragnar Khan. Can you give us a flavor of your day-to-day -day responsibilities? I know Laura kind of touched on this earlier, but what does a day in the life of Mike Levine look like? 
Oh boy. Um, <laughs> I would tell you that no day is ever the same as the day before. I, I've yet to come in and have the same day that I had the day before at, uh, um, in my job. Um, and that's one of the coolest parts about it because you never know. I can come in thinking that we're going to do one thing and then something comes up and it's like, okay, we're doing something totally different. But it ranges from everything from, um, uh, like I said, finding and telling stories and doing that through, uh, if you go to media.4.com where you can find our news releases and photography and videos, like making sure that um, we're telling those stories and having the um, you know assets that media would go out and use to help tell those stories to... Uh, planning reveals, uh, you know, the reveal of a future product. Uh, and also, um, you know, Jordan, I think you had some firsthand um, experience with it. Like your your experience behind the wheel of uh, Bronco DR uh, was was one of the projects that I most look forward to over the past uh, uh, couple of months or so, getting ready for King of the Hammers, uh, was making sure that um, we had the very first Bronco DR that we could take media through. And uh, so I was out at King of the Hammer, spent a lot of time out there because I love the event, um, yeah. but also wanted to make sure that you and and uh, some other media had a chance to not just take a ride in Bronco DR, but actually got to ride Bronco DR, um, you know, around Johnson Valley, which is where Bronco was born. So, um, you know, putting that program together for that, you know, was, uh, uh, was an investment, but uh, I love to, you know, love reading the stories and love seeing, uh, I love seeing every person's reaction when they got out from, uh, uh, from the vehicle. That was a pretty insane experience. I was telling the team afterwards, well, because we initially, hey, we didn't know it was going to happen, but, you know, I thought it was going to be a ride hop in the passenger seat, take a, you know, hot lap, and that was it. Um, the last thing I was expecting was to get behind the wheel of it, which is pretty rare for an OEM like Ford to provide an experience at that caliber with that caliber of vehicle. So that was something super special and uh, certainly hope not once in a lifetime, as I said, but uh, incredibly special and one that I will not forget. So thank you for that. Yeah, so uh, lots, of, lots of other cool things to come that we're in the middle of planning. Great. Can't, can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> uh, another question from Ragnar Khan on the forums. Uh, he said, I've noticed Mike is one of the few public-facing Ford employees who regularly interacts with customers on Twitter. Do you enjoy this, or is it just part of the job? Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> it, is, it is not part of the job. Um, I do love hearing from customers. Um, you know, I love to try to help where I can. Um, and, uh, um, you know, I'll go out to cars and coffee. I'll, I'll talk mm -hmm. to customers. I just, um, you know, it's, it's, I think everyone that, you know, if you're driving a Bronco it, everyone kind of has that, um, shared love of the vehicle and, uh, being able to talk about that is, is amazing. And like I said, I, I, I think our, the vehicle lineup that we have today is absolutely outstanding. And if I can see a customer, you know, like using a truck to do exactly what that truck was intended to do. It's like, oh my gosh, that is like yeah. super cool. Like I, I wanna I wanna hear more about what they're what they're experiencing and, and share that because everyone has a story mm -hmm. and you never know. Like some of these stories, um, you know, there was uh, actually there was another there was another uh, uh, person that I'm aware of that has a uh, Fox body Mustang that they just found in a, they bought in a barn like I don't know uh, a little while back and they just did spent 10 years in a barn and they just restored it uh, or didn't restore it. They had, a, uh, they, they washed it for the first time in, in the 10 years. Anyway, there's a YouTube video I tweeted out like a couple of days ago with this uh, Fox body Mustang having its first wash and detail in 10 years. And I'm just like, that is the coolest story going. Super cool. Well, we're going to move over to Instagram questions now, a little bit of a lightning round. Uh, do you think the Bronco nameplate will ever have a hybrid? Um, love hearing uh, feedback from customers. Love to hear what customers think about things like a hybrid. Uh, we also see a lot of requests for where is an electric Bronco going to be. Uh, but you know, don't comment on speculation about future yep. products. But um, always, always tell people that if uh, if you're if you're wanting something, um, you know, better to speak up and let people know mm -hmm. so that people can see it. Uh, but uh, no no news to share about a, a hybrid Bronco. Sounds good. What is the favorite via? Uh, what is your favorite vehicle you've launched with Ford? Uh, favorite vehicle. So I, I still go back to when I joined the company and and launched uh, the 2015 F-150, which was um, uh, high strength military grade aluminum alloy body. That was and, a big deal. 
and oh, it was such a big deal. I remember it was the most like coming in from the outside and sitting in the meetings and hearing um, the different points of view and putting the whole plan together. Um, that was like a oh boy, that was like a two and a half, three year project really to put that whole thing together to to get to the moment where we could do it and uh, and show just how much we had advanced the truck segment that it wasn't mm-hmm. you know just the aluminum, but it was much more than that. And uh, and getting to the other side and seeing it uh, win uh, North American Truck of the Year and seeing it win all these other honors like um, that, aside from like starting my own company and trying to bootstrap myself and go out and do investment like that whole focus of that project was was one of the most challenging and rewarding um, things that I've ever done. So I still go back to the original. Um, uh, 2015 F-150. That I just, I just love that. But re- recently, I would say, um, I think Bronco again, Bronco Raptor. Mm-hmm. The, the fact that um, when we did the media drive for that, we went to Johnson Valley. We went and we and we were like, we're going to go take this on the exact same race course that the King yeah. of Hammers racers do, like the 4600 trucks and the and the 4400 trucks, and we're going to do this in a stock truck that you can turn key drive away from a dealer and it has it has 37 inch tires like yeah. i mean just utterly bonkers and we took media that some of which hadn't even really been off road before and we put them in the seat of the raptor and we coached them through it yeah and they did what the same courses that the king of the hammers does and <laughs> that's like it was how nice do we, how do we do it? it's completely nuts it's it's so I love I, that's why I love Bronco Raptor because it gives you so much capability and it's so manageable and it's and it's just I mean it's the it's the real deal. Yeah, I remember doing the her problem trailer section of uh, Johnson Valley and thinking I'm like there's no way this vehicle is going to go over that and sure enough it went up it with barely a bump or a scratch uh, that was I haven't been on a ton of media drives but it was definitely yeah this is one I of the more mean, insane is, ones. This is why we do so much motorsports. I mean, because the motorsports helps us make a better vehicle for our customers. Bronco Raptor is the is the first Ultra Four inspired SUV, and uh, it is a direct result of getting involved in the King of the Hammers for so many years and um, racing, uh, uh, having a Ford Performance race in King of the Hammers, and take all of the learnings and apply that into again something that you could go turnkey from a dealership and you could drive right to Johnson Valley and, and do lots of that. So the team knows, but the more time I get behind the wheel of one, the more I love it. And I'm like, this is the most amazing impractical daily driver ever, but it's incredible. Yeah. Um, what was the first vehicle you owned? Uh, like I said, I grew up in a, uh, in a GM family. Uh, so the uh, first vehicle I ever owned was a 1984 uh, Chevrolet S10 Blazer. Okay. Uh, Bronco Sasquatch versus Ranger Tremor off-road. Tough question for you. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> um, like them both uh, for two different reasons. One is um, Bronco Sasquatch. Um, like, I could, I can go on pretty much any trail with Bronco Sasquatch, go out for the day and have a blast and know that, um, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get from point A to point B and it'll be a lot of fun. Um Ranger Tremor uh, takes a bit more, uh, just a bit more um, time to make sure I've got the right line and uh, and you know longer wheelbase, a little bit less ground clearance. Um, but whereas Bronco, I find is really good for like an overnight at most, uh, just with all of our gear and taking family. Um, Ranger Tremor is perfect for me to go like overlanding to do a. A, a one or two day trip where I don't have mm-hmm. to feel like I'm stuffing everything in the back of the vehicle and I'm, you know, squeezing out one of the seats to, to do it. Like I can, I can take uh, both my kids and I can make sure that we've got all the tents and the gear and everything that in the cargo box. And it's just like, it's just, it's just a joy to, to have a very uh, civilized and enjoyable time uh, camping, you know, versus trying to squeeze in so much gear into the Bronco that uh, it's like, okay, this is kind of a, you know, having a lot of fun on the trail, but yeah. compromising a bit on the space. Yeah, super cool. Uh, another question. Jim Farley recently discussed efforts to address quality. Can you share with us some of the things Ford is doing to increase the quality across the lineup? 
yeah, I mean, absolutely. Everyone's attention is on quality uh, these days. I know our team is fully on it. And when I talked about our crazy smart engineers, like all that attention right now is, is focused on quality. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we're, we're taking more time to make sure that we get the launch of the vehicles absolutely correct when we launch new vehicles. Uh, I think you really see that with the all new Super Duty that's uh, coming up here. Yes. Um, and uh, certainly we very quickly learn uh, if there is a quality issue uh, that the team uh, attacks it and fixes it right away. And uh, so, I, you know, you can absolutely bet everyone's laser focused on giving customers the quality that they, that they deserve um, with, uh, with all of our products. Fantastic. There you go. Great answer. Uh, we're going to move over to some live uh, questions now from the Super Chat, and then, Mike, we will let you go because uh, okay. we've already kept you past the time we said we would. Um, let's see. There's a lot of questions about the Dark Horse, and I know oh, um, <laughs> I know <laughs> drives haven't started and drive impressions and all that, uh, but I'm just going to ask, and I probably know the answer, but have yeah. you driven the Dark Horse? And if so, how does it compare to the Mach 1? Uh, all right. So, yes, I have driven the Dark Horse. Oh, wow. Um, I, uh, I won't go into all the drive impressions of it, but I've owned, um, I've owned um, a couple of Mustang GTs with the performance package, um, uh, and mine have been manual transmission cars. Top both my kids to drive manual transmission Mustang. Amen. Um, yep. And uh, I've driven the Mach 1. I, will, I think what people will notice most about Dark Horse just the first time they get in, well, two, two things. One is the digital cockpit. The all digital, it looks so cool. Uh, it it's it's the first time I've ever gotten into a Mustang where I didn't just want to be like, OK, I'm putting it in first gear and I'm going to go and I'm going to go yeah. play on the, in the mountains. Like literally sat there for about 45 minutes and just played with all the different screens, trying to figure out how I wanted to set the car up, you know, favorites. Um, ju- I mean, it, it's it's truly science fiction for for me growing up like analog and, and uh, you know, just hard, hard instruments to go to this entire digital setup where every screen I can customize. And, you know, if I want to see oil temp or trans temp or inlet temp, and you can, you can do all that. So anyway, the digital cockpit is huge. Uh, the other thing is when you do put it into first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, um, the, the, uh, uh, the new dual throttle body mm-hmm. intake, um, I find uh, changes the exhaust note in a really wicked way. Just is like, oh man, it's just I love love active valve exhaust. But when you put active valve exhaust with the uh, with the uh, uh, twin intake, um, it just it's just a, a whole new level of like, uh, yeah, like I could use more of this. In my shoot this. Forget the cappuccino. Shoot this. In my- <laughs> it, it sounds really good in that launch video. Yeah, I mean, and you're and you're hearing straight up exhaust. Like when you get into the car and you're sitting in there and you hear the intake noise as much as you hear the exhaust, it's like, oh yeah, that's like it's just it's just a just a whole new just a whole new like um, level of like man, these guys are crazy smart to put this together. <laughs> well, it's an absolutely gorgeous vehicle. I mean, it's such a beautiful evolution of the Mustang design. Um, the sharp angles, the headlights, the tail lights. I mean, it's just an absolutely stunning car. Uh, and the digital cockpit looks cool. So if you have, have any extra seats, the media drive, let us know. I know we do Bronco. <laughs> We're willing to expand in uh, other parts of the stable. Last question for you. We're going to end yep. on a fun one. Uh, Mike, love the pictures of the Tremor and the wild night and day. The views are stunning. Any plans to one day to get one? Uh, with the trimmer with the Aurora Northern Lights in the background. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's so that's uh, missing. That's on the bucket list. Um, someone the other day on Twitter had just posted pics of the uh, Northern Lights. Uh, yeah. I guess they were really strong a couple days ago. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I love I love my photography hobby. That's my de-stressor. And uh, one of these days I'll get out of Southern California and drive as far <laughs> north as possible to uh, to catch the northern lights that would be epic maybe maybe i should do that in a bronco like that would be like maybe you'll have to come with us to iceland and you can well i was going to say lights are really good there the iceland trip uh yeah absolutely i think uh, i think i and we can go hunting for uh, john bronco at the same time i think that's a fantastic <laughs> idea great idea we'll have to get that on the calendar well mike thank you so much for joining us we really appreciate your time and taking questions uh from the audience we know they appreciate it and we appreciate it as well so safe travels we know you're bouncing around the country uh stay in touch and we hope to see you again very very soon yeah thanks so much for uh, for having me on
Of course. Thanks, take care, Mike. Brother. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye. Well, there you have it, folks. There is North American Product Communications Director, Mike Levine. Again, huge thanks to Mike for joining us. We saw a lot of questions uh, in the Super Chat. Obviously, we can't get to all of them uh, due to time constraints. And there's a lot of questions that uh, don't fall under Mike's purview. They go under the brand team or engineering or the program team. So there's questions that even if we answered them, there's just, you know, that that's not his role. Uh, so rather than asking those and him saying I can't answer it because that's not his job, uh, we did questions he can't answer because that is much more relevant. But with that being said, we're going to turn it over to Matt for some industry news. Matt. Absolutely. Let's jump into some industry news. There's not a whole lot that's that's new as far as industry news uh, that's Bronco specific, uh, but I think there's a few things that we've seen uh, over the past few weeks here. So uh, first one being that Kelly Blue Book has marked uh, Bronco on its top 10 list of best projected five-year resale values. Uh, so it actually finished fourth among that list at a 65.4% resale value, trailing only behind Toyota Tundra, the Toyota Tacoma, and then the Tesla Model X, uh, which Tesla Model X and Toyota Tacoma are at 66%, so right there, and then Tundra at 73%. Uh, beyond that, we do have a recall slash delivery hold. Uh, don't worry, though, it only affects a small number of Broncos. Uh, so only 163 Broncos affected with a steering gear replacement. Uh, and that's Broncos built uh, late 22 and then into 2023. So keep an eye out for that. Um, if you if you have uh, gotten the notice for that, um, then you know, you'll, your dealer will obviously contact you and you can take it to them. Uh, there is a do not drive uh, hold on that. So uh, just make sure that you're paying attention there. And then another thing that you may have seen floating around the internet is this uh, patent or a series of patents that Ford uh, has placed that are ways to get people to make payments <laughs> that have, have had their vehicles repossessed. So it's, it's patents. Uh, Centered around a repossession computer system. So if you're not making payments on your Bronco, for example, uh, then it would essentially brick the car or limit what your it Bronco said it would do. just start honking. Like it'll just start incessantly <laughs> honking in the drive. <laughs> it said it said they could do things to make you not want to drive, like turn the volume really loud, lock the doors uh, randomly. I don't know. That's yeah. That's just what I'm what I'm seeing out there. So uh, the honking one could be annoying for the neighbors. I know it would be an annoying. Publicly maybe, yeah. uh, maybe they would pay for your uh, vehicle for you. you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> Go fund me to stop the vehicle from honking. Yeah, you never know. Never uh, and then part of that too was the autonomous vehicles uh, could allegedly drive themselves away. So if you're not making payments, then your uh, autonomous Ford vehicle could just drive straight on back to I don't know where. I guess you're. Ali said, imagine being at work and watching your car drive away. Like, can you just, <laughs> like, you're just sitting there getting a cup of coffee and your car just backs out and takes off. <laughs> yeah, there's there's got to be some sort of uh, legal, something associated with that. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer, so uh, we don't need to even speculate. But um, I thought that was interesting. A lot of people are talking about that. That's uh, one, of the, one of the bigger things in the news lately. But beyond that, um, that's really some of the bigger things that we're seeing. Uh, Laura, do you have any news? I don't i feel like those were um kind of the highlights it is good yeah. when we have a, a low news week we'll have some more things to talk about later on when we do the wrap up in the um housekeeping section but yeah I'll we do and i totally forgot to do super chat shout outs earlier so i'm just gonna put those in right now uh want to say hello to ford video guy tim bart's big dog overland uh, per, big dog, per <laughs> dog overland. sorry big dog uh, Andrew Williams, Zach uh, Losher, Wild Horses Off-Road, Chris Byrne, Wild Raptor 2023, Popo Patty, Lauren Putnam, hello, Dave Rivers, hello, great to see you, Ali Dubois, uh, Scott Wisen, great to see you again, uh, Jennifer, 
Blanco Bronco Adventures. Hey, guys, how's it going? Uh, and a lot more people. Tahoe Traveler, see you in there, too. Great to see all of you, uh, as always. And thanks for joining us on this latest episode of Bronco Nation Live. And with that, we're going to move to the next section. As we promised, we're going to tell you how you can win a Bronco Raptor, which is super cool. So if you are all not familiar Fairlane Estate, the former home of Henry and Clara Ford, located in Dearborn, Michigan, is currently under restoration, and they have been doing sweepstakes to win various vehicles or large prizes uh, when you purchase tickets to the sweepstakes that all go to fund the restoration of the incredible estate there that we got to visit last year during uh, the Woodward Dream Cruise. And we are thrilled tonight to announce the latest and greatest uh, sweepstakes from the Fairlane Estate, and that is a 2023, 2023 Bronco, Bronco Raptor, Raptor in code, code orange. orange. And, and because they, they love you all so much, and we love you all so much, much there's a special promotion for those from Bronco Nation, Nation who go and ticket, ticket, get tickets ticket early uh, to, to increase your chances to win this incredible Bronco, Bronco Raptor. Raptor. So the link, I believe, is in the description of this video. If it's not... Make sure uh, I'll put in there after, but while you're down there, go leave it, go leave a thumbs up, leave a like on the video. But you can go to www.codeorangebronco.com today to buy your tickets to win this Code Orange Bronco Raptor. And if you use code, I think we can show it on the screen here, BN Early Bird, B is in Bronco, N is in Nation, Early Bird, all one word, you're going to get 50% more entries when you purchase through March 31st. So if you buy 10, you'll get an extra five. If you buy 20, you'll get an extra 10. I think my math is right there. But you can head to www.codeorangebronco.com. Enter code BN Early Bird at checkout and uh, increase your chances to win a Bronco Raptor. As Mike was just saying, how amazing it is. You could win one for your very own garage at a reduced price. Laura, what are your thoughts on a Ford video guy said Jordan doesn't like his and it's it and is it giving away? No, I don't. I, I'm not fun like that. <laughs> he I, went with Shadow Black. I would love. I would love to give yeah, my Bronco. He, he didn't love it. He just had to had to give it to someone. It's signed. I'll sign the dash too. No, what? I like that it's code orange. I think that's cool. I think that's obviously since it's a uh, um, exclusive to that trim. Um, it's a great color for this giveaway. Yeah, and the team over at Fairlane is phenomenal. Bob Burry and Etzel Ford, uh, who we have had on multiple times before, uh, were kind enough to offer this opportunity to you all again. So huge shout out and thank you to them. Uh, they hopefully will be joining us again on a future broadcast to update you. Uh, I talked to Bob Burry yesterday, the president of Fairlane, and he told me an update that they are beginning renovations on Henry's garage, uh, which is where he used to park his vehicle, not a Bronco, and not to be confused with Ford's Garage, the restaurant, uh, but Henry's Garage at the estate. So we're super excited to see how those restorations go. And we hope uh, to be able to tour it this summer. Uh, it's the best time to visit the estate by far is in the summer. And we hope to take you all through it as well during the Woodward Dream Cruise. Maybe you can even take a picture in the portico with your Bronco like we did last year. But again, huge thank you to the team over at Fairlane. They're incredible, doing really beautiful work on that historic estate. And uh, make sure to get your sweepstakes ticks at tickets full disclosure we don't get a kickback from this we don't get a commission we're not earning any money on this so just want to put that out there uh, but this is a great way to increase your chances of getting a bronco raptor in your driveway without having to order and get a golden ticket and pay fifty thousand dollars over msrp but yeah super cool don't miss your chance to do that link will be in the description code will be in the description get it before march 31st next speaking of events like woodward dream cruise laura is going to talk about events laura I am. Um, so the first one, we have Super Celebration East in Townsend, Tennessee. We launched Base Camp last week. Yeah. yeah. And we were sold out in, I think, about 14, 14 hours? hours. Yeah. So really it went quick. really quick. Uh, we are so excited to have you guys there at the campground. We've got... Um, like base camp, like mini base camp um, at a, another campground close by for the people who couldn't fit in. So I think we've got um, a decent amount of BN members over at another one just minutes away in the opposite direction. But most of the activities will be happening on the show field. So right there where Bronco Driver hosts Supercell will be having some fun things, including a concert um, yes. sponsored by BNO. So the sound system that is in the Lux Package Broncos, um, they will be sponsoring a concert and we will be having um, some live music there for, I think this is our, I don't know, I haven't been to an event where we've had that yet. So this will be a fun Bronco a concert. Event. This will be our first concert. Yeah. yeah, it's our first one for sure. Can we say um, who it is? 
I don't know if we don't know. <laughs> We're not know. revealing it yet. Yeah. Throwing out some famous name. Uh, it's Taylor Swift. She added a stop <laughs> yeah, to and it's a Bronco base camp in Townsend, Tennessee. <laughs> She's a big Bronco fan. Yeah, oh yeah. So that'll be one of the the fun things that we're doing. And then, of course, we're doing drives. You have to do drives when you go to a Bronco event. So we have, um, if you go on broncodrivermagazine.com, I believe is their website. If not, just type that in. You'll find it. Uh, And you register for Supercell um, because that is different than just signing up for Basecamp. Basecamp is a place to sleep. And then you (laughs) still need to get your tickets for the show field and and where else, um, all the other things that happen on there, you get a t-shirt, you get entered in the show and shine, you get, um, I think, lunch tokens. Um, but when you're on that page, you can see that there's a couple of things that you can mark that you're interested in. And one of them is going to be off-roading at Winrock. And so we're going to take Broncos over there. And then we've got another drive planned. Um, and then Bronco Driver has a host of drives planned. So it's going to be a great time. Yes. And then past Supercell, um, we have Moab Bronco Safari coming up in May. And we will be opening base camp registration for that Friday if things go as planned. If not, it'll be very shortly after that. So get ready to do one of those. We'll do one of those same. Well, kind of- hold on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Got to give a little more zest, zest than that. We're oh, thrilled okay. to announce Bronco Base Camp is coming to Moab Broncos Safari for the very no, first time. <laughs> Wait, we announced it on the last one, didn't we? Is this I, new I information? I think, teased, I think we teased it. I don't think oh, I think goodness. it's new information. Yeah, okay. so we did uh, we, we didn't do any well, I attended Moab Broncos Safari last year. We did base camp at Eastern Jeep Safari. And this year we are thrilled to announce that we we're bringing Moab Broncos Safari. <laughs> We are bringing base camp to Moab Bronco Safari the first week of May. Uh, so we've been talking to the people there uh, that organized Bronco Safari. They're incredible people. I had an amazing time last time. It was one of my favorite events all year. The weather's great. The trails are great. Uh, we're going to be doing trail rides. We're also going to have a concert and barbecue there presented by b which is super exciting. It's just going to be an incredible week to come together, experience um, the beautiful landscape of Moab. Uh, and if you've never been, we will, of course, have accommodations for you at Bronco uh, Base Camp. If you do know that that time of year, hotels in Moab are ridiculously expensive. Um, so Bronco Base Camp is going to be a wonderful place for you to come and lodge, hang out really close to all the action. We're going to have tents, RV, and overland spots as usual. And uh, registration, as Laura said, will open up soon. Um, and we anticipate it selling out very quickly. Uh, but Bronco Safari is incredible, and we can't wait to be there. Lots of goodies, lots of action going on. Uh, we're going to have off rodeo trail guides to take you on trails. We're going to be there as a crew, um, and it's just a, a really big week that we're looking forward to. So uh, thrilled to announce it. Uh, really grateful to the Bronco Safari team for hosting us, allowing us to come and take part in their event, and we can't wait to share all of this with you as well. Bronco Base Camp will be in addition to the regular registration for Moab Bronco Safari, uh, so you'll have to pay for Bronco Base Camp and also register separately directly with um, Moab Bronco Safari, so just keep that in mind. But yeah. Laura, sorry to, sorry to steal your thunder, but... No, thank you for spicing it up. I, I <laughs> You know, we live and breathe this so much that I feel We see like it all day. I forget what we've announced and we haven't announced, so I yep. appreciate that. No, that's awesome. The reason we're going to Safari is basically because of Jordan, so um, he said it was so good and convinced us that really that's good. where we needed to spend our time this year in Moab, and I'm excited to experience it for the first time I heard. It was just absolutely fantastic, so... And I see Brian Clark and Amanda Williams and Jake Williams in the chat uh brian lives in moab and amanda and jake um are part of the crew that put on bronco safari all wonderful people and we're super excited to spend some time with them in a beautiful part of the country yes definitely Utah bronco one more Club. you guys are the best no yeah. um one more thing that we just want to talk about briefly is takeover day we've got texas in 10 days so i'm very excited about that one we'll be at bronco off rodeo texas and we have a wave of full of Bronco Nation members, there are just a few spots left. So if you're still trying to get into that, um, head over to broncooffrodeo.com and get registered for March 18th in Texas. And our sports are welcome too. So if you have a sport and you would love to do a Bronco Nation day, we're going to do some giveaways. We've got the regular programming, but also um, Jordan and I will be there and we'll have some fun little special things to make it um centered on Bronco Nation members. Uh, that is March 18th. And again, a couple spots left, so you can sign up for that. We will be doing a meetup afterwards um, from 6 to 8 on that. It's a Saturday, Wednesday. right? 
Well, Wait. <laughs> it is a Saturday. It's not a Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> it's all mixed up. came out. <laughs> yes, on Saturday, we'll be doing a meetup from 6 to 8. So if you're a Bronco Nation member and you would love to go back to um, Off Rodeo and see where you went through your own course, or if you haven't been, you did a different Off Rodeo and you just want to see the Texas one, or you just want to hang out with us, we would love to see you. I know that we've got... Uh, Everglades coming already. We've got a Raptor coming in the parking lot. So we're going to do a little meetup of all our vehicles and um, it'll be a fun time together. And then we also have another takeover day announced New Hampshire, June 9th. That one is a Friday. Um, so sign up for that one. I heard that one's going relatively quickly too. So if you're interested in that one, get on broncoffrodeo.com, register, just put in the comments that you're a BN member and you will be put with the rest of us. Lauren said she's going to come to New Hampshire. So I was told I have to save a spot for her. So oh, fantastic. Uh, we love Morgan, Wall- Lauren. Morgan Wallen is currently the top vote for base camp <laughs> performers. So we'll see what we can do. I personally would Let's vote Zach it. Bryan, but uh, I'll, we'll, hey, we'll I, call Morgan Wallen's people up and see if he I wants to come hang out week. in Townsend. I'm like... We're on a first name basis now. Well, totally. <laughs> Get on it, Matt. Um, yeah, uh, Allie and Bird Dog Overland are asking about the Silver Lake Sand Dudes event in August. Laura, do you know anything about that? That's in Michigan. <laughs> That's about oh, all I know about it. True. Um, true. It's 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 massive. It's a fun event. It's it's a classic. It's iconic. Yeah. If you want to be vacuuming sand out of your vehicle for until the next Silver Lake Sand Dunes, <laughs> go ahead and go to that. I think I'm still vacuuming sand out of the Jeep that I purchase i had been there once even though i'm not gone there in that um so no it's great time um sand and mud though are very hard on your vehicle um and hard to get out of your vehicle we'll take a dollar Uh, bronco up there and yeah beat the living daylights out of it no i'm sure michigan bronco club is doing an event um i believe i saw that on the calendar and uh, a lot of people in the forums love going to that one i think slash racer and dino bronco went to that last year and um, a bunch of people from michigan indiana ohio area so if you are interested in that one um i don't know if it's on the calendar yet but i don't know it'll probably August show 5th. up on the on the bn calendar That's we'll be like, at the woodward dream cruise that event we don't know yeah tbd maybe we'll, we'll deputize laura I probably it's, well no from Utah. it's right it's right by, by my birthday and i usually like <laughs> oh. to go try and escape around my birthday so never mind we're not I'm, sending laura. i haven't gone to that one yet but it's okay we don't have to other people will be there event. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Allie and Bird Dog Overland will be there. Who else do you need? Um, I saw another question in here. Is the Bronco Nation staff going to Moab Safari? Yes. We will all be there. Except Matt. Matt won't be there, but we'll get that. We'll get to that in a little bit. <laughs> I won't be there. <laughs> Matt won't be there. Uh, but the rest of the staff will be there. I will be there. Laura will be there. London London's will be there. coming. Yeah. Yes. The whole the whole squad. So roll up. Uh, and Laura and I will also be at Supercell East in Townsend in April. So you can come say hi to us or not say hi or slap us whatever your opinion is of us um (laughs) (laughs) they'll they'll hug laura they'll slap me which is totally understandable well we Um, talked about that in the forums today we did yeah spicy forum action today um any other news on events before i move into merchandise i think that is great we've got another little we're going to do a wraparound um, and do some more events later on. We're going to do a wraparound. Um, okay. Well, we're going to move into merch then. L- uh, London, unfortunately, was not able to join us. She, again, is at a Wiz Khalifa, con- Wiz Khalifa concert <laughs> for the second live stream in a row. We don't really know what's happening. But sadly, she just couldn't make it. Uh, but we don't have a ton of merch news. We have a lot of new spring merchandise coming soon. We were looking at designs today. And I personally think it's our best merch yet. Uh, so you guys will get information on that soon. Um, and then uh, new partners. We have a lot of new partners coming to the site. If you watched our KOH broadcast, you saw that Ford Performance and Bronco Nation are partnering to bring you Ford Performance parts and accessories right, right on the Bronco Nation site, launching end of Q1, which is just in a few weeks. Ah, that's scary. Okay. Um, yes, you'll be able, soon be able to buy Ford Performance parts directly from Bronco Nation. So if you want tube doors or wheels or the Ford Performance tune kit, any stuff like that will avail- will be available right on the site with member pricing as always. And we have a whole lineup of partners coming uh, right after that. So it's super exciting. we got a lot of great news to share with you guys soon. In addition to all of our existing great partners, the most recent being ARB, which you can now shop on the site as well. And the Fender badges. People got really heated last time after I talked about those. So sorry, but not sorry. Um, the Fender badges have started arriving and will be shipping out 
they either already started shipping out or will be shipping out. Uh, I believe the first trim that arrived was Outer Banks. If you ordered an Outer Banks set of Fender badges, those will be shipping to you very soon if they haven't already. Uh, and we are getting restocks of Badlands and Wild Track. Those sold out really quick. So those are being restocked very soon. Those are still on pre-order, but they should be shipping to you before the end of the month, which is super exciting. We can't wait for you guys to get your hands on those and uh, to rock them on your vehicles. That is it for merchandise. Saw a couple other questions. Ford performance parts on BN will be amazing. Al Robinson, totally agree. Uh, Tyler Traveler said, my dealer does not sell Ford performance parts. BN will be, new, will be my new source. Fantastic. Uh, can we use Ford Pass performance points? Not through us. Since we're not affiliated with that system, uh, we can't accept Ford performance points as currency um, for better or for worse. That sounds complicated, but, but yeah. Um, so next we have, uh, before we get into community, if you were at KOH or even if you were not at KOH, uh, we had an excellent time and we want to show you all a little recap of it. So let's roll the tape of the King of Hammers recap video. We are here in Johnson Valley, California for King of Hammers 2023. Absolutely fantastic to see familiar faces rolling in, Bronco after Bronco. It is a wild ride at King of the Hammers. We have been having a blast. We're excited to see what the next day holds for this. strapped to this much power, I mean, boy, this thing is an absolute monster. Today was a 4600 race, and just like last year, Bronco swept the podium again with Von Gittin Jr. and Lauren Healy coming in first place, Brad Lovell and Roger Lovell coming in second place, and then Bailey Cole and his partner coming in third place, where they just visited base camp moments ago. They actually left their trucks here, which is super kind of them. Well, there you have it. There's a little bit of a recap of our incredible week in the desert out in Johnson Valley. Uh, it was so incredible. I keep saying incredible. I need to find new adjectives. How was it? To it describe things. It was good. <laughs> uh, it was super cool. <laughs> Did I say KOA? People are saying I said KOA. It's KOH. KOA. If I said KOA, I meant KOH. Uh, <laughs> but nonetheless, it was a, a great week as always. And for those of you who came out, it was uh, awesome to have you, to go on trail rides with you, to just spend time around the campfire. Great as always. And we hope to see you next year if you didn't make it if you did make it hope to see you again but that was a little bit of a glimpse into the community and we're going to segue with that video into the community laura mother forum take it away so i wanted to highlight some of our member channels on youtube um i don't watch a lot of youtube videos so i want you guys to i'm going to rely on you you can add your favorites to the chat um the super chat right there on the screen and you can tell me some of the ones that you really enjoy subscribing to and watching besides bronco nation because i know you are subscribed to that and you love the videos yes you click that big red button you've clicked the like button um so i was watching an interesting recovery video today it was a uh, Oh, sorry, yes. Um, on Bent Road Off, Bent Off Road Recovery. Uh, you guys might have seen that it's making its way around the forums. Um, so if you guys have some recovery videos, if you've got um, ones that you like to watch from your dealers or any of the ones on overlanding, just throw them in there. Maybe we've got some new things to watch on our time off. Um, and if you aren't or you are following some of these 
channels and you've not met the people yet, um, I think this is a great way to kind of have a hook when you actually do run into these people at events. This is actually the first way I met Jordan as I approached him and I told him I had saw him on YouTube. Um, and it didn't work out so great for me because he looked at me a little strange and whatever. But it, it works if you're like a okay, quiet okay. person and, well, no. you know, uh, and you it's just want to. Too big of a celebrity. You got to. Yeah. yeah. And, no, it helps if you. Who's if this you lady? Wanna... Why is she approaching me? If you want to know people at events and um, you might be able to use their, hey, I saw you on YouTube or watch your last video as a hook. <laughs> um, so actually four of these people are people I first met at at Supercell. So it is a meeting place of the ages. Um, so if you haven't been to Supercell yet, it may it's go. It's our two year anniversary of meeting. Laura. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. So Jason, tears. if you want to put those up on the screen, um, one of the first ones is uh, Long MacArthur Ford. So that's Tim Bart's uh, Ford video guy. He's and in the chat. Ford. Shout out, Tim. Yep. And they provide some really great dealer information. So if you're not subscribed to that one, um, I don't know if you can see on the screen. This is, yes. you know, yep. this is not. Um, She's up. These are not our personal accounts. So if you see that they're not subscribed right now, it's not because we don't universities or anything like that. <laughs> you it's can just see in the top right corner, it's not, it's not signed in, yeah. Um, yeah, so, so go ahead and follow that one. Um, Tim gives a lot of information, does live streams every Tuesday, and then does um, a bunch of other videos throughout the week. And, and Sarah does um, some shorts and, and clips that may help you guys make better decisions about um, – ordering your Bronco when the order banks open or get your private offer or any kind of specific dealer information. And then the next one that I have is uh, Dave and Kelly from All Tree Nation. So uh, Jordan was recently on their their live stream. and, um, and Tim just and called have... me out. He said I wasn't subscribed. So I need to go subscribe to Tim right now. Sorry, Tim. Oh, okay. Well, I am subscribed. Um, so yeah. Dave, Dave and Kelly, we met them um, several Subscribe times. We now. met them at, at SEMA. I've met Kelly at uh, when we did Texas Off Rodeo with Allie, um, who's here in the chat, too. And they they will keep you entertained with, um, if, you like, if you like drama, if you like controversy, um, Dave's channel is one that, that you might enjoy watching. Uh, and then the next one is one of them that I had met at Supercell. This is Gavin and Dwayne at um, Driven Wild Outdoors. And their live stream, unfortunately, I think it goes kind of the same times as ours does. Um, so make sure that you rotate back and forth between those where every other week, I think they are weekly. Super cool people. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely fantastic people who have several Broncos. And I think they're branching out into um, additional vehicles. But I've used Dwayne's videos and Gavin's videos videos several times for when they're comparing when the track bar ad was added to um, the Broncos and things like that. So definitely useful for hardtop noises, things like that. And um, another one that I wanted to highlight was Wild Horses. So I'm sure many of you guys are subscribed to Mitch and company um, over there at Wild Horses 4x4. And they will be at um, Supercell East and they always do special offers where you are able to order things ahead of time and they will bring the parts um, out to the show field. So they're in California and it'll be able to um, save some, some shipping for you. They're first going to be at Lone Star Early Bronco Club meetup at uh, Katimsi Rocks, April 7th through 10th, and they're traveling across the country. So um, check out their channel. Uh, Mitch is very much one of those yeehaw Bronco type of guys. So <laughs> if you like, if you like that, what type does that mean? Bronco, it means he sends it, and he oh, is yeah. not afraid to break his Bronco for our entertainment. Um, so that that's one that you guys might want to check out if you have not already. And then next one I have is one of our members, Northwest Bronco. Brian does a lot of overlanding and he will um, show you guys various things on his Bronco as well as tips and tricks if you are camping and how to pack light and travel light with your Bronco and um, even tell you what are the best dehydrated meals. So if you're into overlanding or camping or anything like that, hiking, kayaking, mountain climbing, I don't know, um, you might enjoy Brian's channel. And then, of course, we have Mitch at Town & Country TV. I met Mitch also first time at Supercell two years ago. Shout out, Mitch. Um, Love yeah, Mitch. I met a lot. I met Lauren first time at Supercell. It's just, it is the place to be. So make sure you're coming out to Supercell. It, is, it is a place to be. It, it is, is a place to be. 
I met <laughs> someone yesterday. I was at a car show, and they said, yeah, there's this Bronco guy. I only know him as 6'3". And I was like, yeah, Mitch? Mitch? Oh, 6'3 <laughs> is in height. I was like, I was like yep, yep, that's the one. So we appreciate the content that Mitch puts out there, too. He has um, also a dealer, and he'll do various information. I believe that he still has a Bronco giveaway happening so check out his page and that is it for my members fantastic thank you so much laura some great people in the community uh we love to see the community come together somebody asked are scripted broncos allowed at these events no you know this is this is the biggest collection of earlier gens which is where the script came from so you will see early gens they and are welcome. We and you'll see me like kind of triggered in the corner, seizing. I'll be in like the edge of the field, just like seizing and in, in disgust. <sighs> I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm All broncos yeah. are welcome. Any yeah. kind of bad. This is a safe space for broncos. Absolutely. And I heard there are going to be a lot of six gems there. Yes. So sign up if you are any gem and you will be welcome. And that's that. Somebody um, said, uh, okay. Scott Weisson said, I hear R- Raptor has removed the hard top and Lux pack. Wait, what? Say that again. Raptor's removed. Raptor's removed the hard top and Lux package. That's got to no. be impossible. There's no way. A I would soft hope. top on a Raptor would look horrific. Yeah, I don't. I haven't heard anything about that. That can't be true. That'd be the first of it for me. Lauren Putnam, can you answer that question? <laughs> uh, negative. Ali said negative. So yeah. Scott said that's what my dealer said. It sounds like you, you're doing wrong. Yeah, dealers have your rap, you're not affected. <laughs> um, so yeah, Ali said negative. Yeah, that uh, that sounds like a rumor, 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 conspiracy theory. Um, so no to that one. Okay, keep the questions coming, guys. It's always great to talk to you. There's some sort of drinking game going on in the super chat too, which I can't seem to follow. But uh, stay safe, my friends. Next, we are going to move into housekeeping. Um, Laura, do we want to start with the website? Yeah, let's start, start with, with the website. Jason, if you want to just flash the events page. So we keep talking about Supercell and Moab Bronco Safari. <laughs> Bronco Safari. Um, if you are not in either of those sides of the country and you want to do something in the middle or in Florida or in Maine or anything else, you can add your own event on there. We just had um, Blanco Bronco and uh, the, the guys over there in Washington do a fantastic event. He's got another channel that was as enjoying watching um, their... I met them in uh, Texas. Yeah, they saw them at KOH. Yeah, they're everywhere. Yep. They are traveling the country. Um, they had a great video, too, about uh, their meetup. And so if you are not able to make it to one of these ones that we are talking about, put your own on there or check out to see what else is happening across the nation. And um, that is a great place to meet people and to have fun with your Bronco. Um, some other things that are happening on the website. There is a – do you guys know there is a traveling lamp going across of America? Oh, do we know? Back and forth. Do we know? We we know. Um, so if you're in the forums, you want to check out the Steel and Stirrups Traveling Lamp Threads. One of our members, one for you, started this out with um, the Coleman lamps that he would refurbish in body color um, and then in classic, too. And um, absolutely stellar work. Like, these things are really cool. And body color is in, like, Bronco body color, not, like, human skin color. <laughs> yeah, that flash. Make that distinction um, there. <laughs> nude. Um so that that lamp, one of them, um, was given as a giveaway, and it was now it's traversing the country. I had it in Michigan. We had it um, at uh, Woodward Dream Cruise, and it's been going back and forth across America. And if you participate in it, there is now a patch that you can add to. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, brand new. Um, added to the added to the forums today. So if you've if you've already taken possession of the lamp or you are planning to, uh, make sure you're following that thread and you can oh, see there the it details is. there There's from the lamp. Yep, Chris worked on it. Chris, who's in our um, chat right now, Buck, yeah, in the forums. He is really great with graphic design. He designed it with Technical Disaster and um, you're able to get a Someone uh, said commemorative patch. It'll be at the Texas Takeover, apparently. Well, that's fantastic. The it lamp's is. coming to the takeover. <laughs> it's like the next BN staff. Let's hope so. Member. I've yeah. never seen the lamp, so we can. The lamp can be insta famous on BN. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so some fun stuff that you can do with the community. And then also, as people have talked about, Ford has not publicly said it, but the order banks are rumored to open on March 27th, which is coming up quickly. And we will cover any of the news that comes along with that. If Raptor comes with a soft tap, you can bet that will be a headline. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and we'll put that in the e-news and all those all sorts of places. So questions that you have, um, all those kinds of things, we'll follow up with Matt, um, the brand manager, and just make sure that you guys are taken care of with what you need to know for 2023 order banks. Should and guys, keep the chat appropriate, please. Like, you can have fun, but don't be an idiot. We'll just put you in timeout. Um, thanks, though. Uh, great points, Laura. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for that. We're excited. Of course. To this. Um, I lost my train of thought there. Social media. Social media. Oh, yes. Going on builds and stuff in that uh, in that thread. We want to feature a lot of your guys' builds, not just on the forums, but on social media as well. So if you don't know, we have a second channel called Bronco Nation Live. It's just at Bronco Nation Live um, on Instagram, where we do a little bit more casual content, not as buttoned up and professional. So if you want, if you have a picture of your build and want it featured on Bronco Nation Live, you can DM it to us on at Bronco Nation Live uh, for a chance to be featured. Yes, scripts are welcome. If your Bronco has a script, you can still send it. We will still post it. Uh, but we want to feature a lot of your guys' builds with parts and just allow the community to see what's going on. There's a lot of people who are still waiting for their Broncos or have just received their Broncos. And it's always great to know what kind of accessories and stuff you guys are putting on your vehicles out in the wild and the experiences you're having with them. So again, you can DM, uh, DM at Bronco Nation Live on Instagram, a photo of your build, and we will select some at random every single week to post and debut. So make sure uh, you do that because we'd love to see more of your guys' vehicles online. Bronco Adventures, yes, you do tag us on Instagram. I do. The Bronco Nation, like the big channel, is a little bit more buttoned down and tight, but we like to have a little bit more fun on Bronco Nation Live, so you can DM us over there, and we'd love to share a lot of your guys' stuff. Now, it's time for the sad part of the evening. This is our first ever, it's not our first ever, it's our second eulogy. Our first eulogy was to um, Amber. Uh, <laughs> and our second eulogy, although he's not died, uh, is Matt. Unfortunately, uh, Matt is leaving us this week. This is Matt's last live stream and his last week at Bronco Nation. Uh, Matt has been an incredible part of the team, uh, more substantially over the last year, but behind the scenes for almost three years, two and a three half years. years at least. Yeah, it's been a while. He's been at events, he's done content, he's done videos. Matt has been such an integral and incredible part of uh, the Bronco Nation family. We love him dearly. Uh, and he has done a lot behind the scenes that you guys don't always see when it comes to membership issues, when it comes to merchandise stores, um, Shopify. You may have gotten an email from me if you may have gotten an email from a customer service, service complaint. <laughs> that is definitely um, an unsung hero of Bronco Nation, who you don't always see him publicly. You're stuck with my annoying self. Uh, but Matt makes a lot of the behind the scenes technical stuff work on a day in and day out basis. Uh, day in and day out basis. Um, so Matt, thank you so much for all you've done uh, for Bronco Nation. We are incredibly sorry you never got to go off road, but to come never did. That, we do I have a surprise for you that I think Jason can share on the screen. Uh -oh. now, uh, that we <laughs> let's see. To present to you in the mail. It is a custom T-shirt. Jason, do you have the picture? Okay. He's there it is, guys. It. <laughs> it is off. I've never been off-roading T-shirt. <laughs> one of one, made just oh. for you. Except I can't guys, wait to wear this when I go <laughs> off for the do, first I time. pray to God you wear this and come to an event, and then we can serve you pancakes. Um, and you're wrapped there. I'm in, if, I might show up at Supercell East. You never know. It's not that far. <laughs> you should. Um, and actually, if you guys want to buy this, we're more than willing to sell it. Um, so <laughs> if you want to buy it, let us know in the Super Chat. We can produce the shirt. Uh, but Matt, you have been such an honor and a joy to have on the team. We're going to miss you dearly. Uh, don't be a stranger. Keep in touch. And maybe All we'll right. see you at an event. I... I, I have a feeling this up, is not is not going to head up Mustang Nation. No. Yes. <laughs> I well, actually, no. I'm I'm selling my Mustang. If anyone wants to buy, oh, it, you? You? <laughs> you can go on the buy sell trade. Buy sell, store. Yeah. I'll, I'll buy sell trade. I've I've got my truck now, and that's good enough for me. Maybe I'll take it off road one day. Um, no, but seriously, it's it's been such a blast over the past year and and really few years, and um, gotten to do so many cool things with the team and. Um, I have fallen in love with the brand. I'm like, now I really have to buy a Bronco. And um, I'm sure this will not be the, the last that you all see at me, of me at events. Um, <laughs> I, 
I'll be right be, back uh, here in a year. <laughs> I'll, I'll probably be back at events. Oh, my title there was expert off-roader. I think. Oh, I was it? Right. I didn't see that. Is my title on there? I was supposed to have. Maybe a we'll make title. a series of T-shirts. A series. Somebody said, "Do that yeah. shirt with the Jeep logo. That could be really funny." Except I don't want to get Some, sued for Jeep. Sued someone bike. said, "Have it for Gear for Good." <laughs> <laughs> someone said, "What's we next?" We do have a new Gear for Good coming. <laughs> we, do. we do new Gear for Good. What's next no. for me? I am moving out of the automotive space, uh, but. Matt won the lottery, and we'll be moving to Bermuda. <laughs> I, I, I bought a lottery ticket. It worked out well. Um, no, I'm, in, I'm moving into technology, a uh, similar thing to what I do, but into another role, um, and it's a, it's a good opportunity. But love love Bronco, love Bronco Nation and the brand, and uh, certainly we'll, we'll still uh, be here on each live stream in the chat. Uh, just yes. We'll have to make you a moderator. If you guys Probably ever shop nuts. at Walmart or Nike or any of those big brands – it's because of Matt. Matt yeah. runs all those companies. It's <laughs> going to be running all those companies. So, yep. yeah. Everyone says congrats. Everyone's very excited for you, Matt. Thank you. We're jealous that you're leaving us, but gone but never forgotten. Gone but never forgotten in That's memoriam. Right. Okay. Any final words from the crew? Any final questions from the audience here? War Eagle. Yes. Everybody said War Eagle. Thank you. War Thank Eagle. you for respecting our Lord and Savior Auburn University. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate your contributions, Matt. Thank you, Chris. Yes, rip. <laughs> <laughs> I know we we knew uh, we were gonna have an in memoriam, but that might have been a little bit too sad. So yeah, you did say it first, Lauren. I'll we'll give you credit. credit. We'll give you credit. You did say we're eagle first. Yeah. Any final words from either of y'all? Have a great night, Bronco have Nation. A great night. <laughs> I love you, Bronco Nation. Uh, all you people out there, you are what makes this uh, happen. And you make it special. It's all about the community, and uh, we appreciate that. That is yes. true. Matt, we thank you. We thank everybody here who joined us. Huge shout out to Mike Levine. Thank you so much for joining us on this fine evening as well. We didn't get all your questions answered. We apologize, but that is how it goes, guys. Thank you. Have a phenomenal rest of your week, and we will see you in two weeks for the next episode of Bronco Nation Live. Sign up for events. Look out for Moab Bronco Safari registration. Sign up for Bronco Nation Takeover Day. Go buy a Fender badge. And uh, that does it for us here on this fine evening of March 8th. You guys have a phenomenal rest of your week. Go get outside. Go enjoy your vehicle. And we will catch you on the next one. <laughs>